welcome to Consistency Breeds Growth Radio. I am your host, Justin Romare. Our incredible guest and myself talk about the cutting edge science and consistency necessary to reach your weight loss, wellness, and performance goals. If you want more information about working with us one-on-one or in a gym setting, head over to consistencybreedsgrowth.com or email us at consistencybreedsgrowth at gmail.com. We will also put links in the show notes. Enjoy the podcast. All right, team, we're back with another episode of CBG Radio, and we have a special guest here today, Kate Gordon. She is a two-time CrossFit Games athlete on a team in 2015 and 2019. She has her level three CrossFit and she's part of the seminar staff. She's also well known as being CrossFitter with the sign. If you haven't looked up this Instagram account, I would definitely do so. And uh, it's gonna be fun today because she's got a little bit of a different accent than the majority of us listen to this podcast because she's from Australia. So Kate, nice to hear from you on the podcast. Very excited. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. So this CrossFitter with a sign thing that you do, and for the, those that, that don't know, Kate actually holds up a sign with like these aha moments of CrossFit. And they're amazing because everyone resonates with them. And it's it's on her Instagram, CrossFitter with a sign. Where did you like come up with this? It was at a time where there was a bit of a trend on social media to do the sign. Mm-hmm. Like it was, you know, painfully obvious statements that people would just put up on a on a. Uh, Board and it was almost a little sarcastic or a little bit dry. And so a bunch of people have been doing them and I kind of just had this one come to me that was like, stop picking weights that are too heavy for you <laughs> yeah. in workouts. And so I posted that on, on my own page um, and it just like was super popular. And I had seen another page called Dude with Sign. If you've seen that, he's got a couple mm-hmm. million followers. And I was like, I wonder if there's a CrossFitter with Sign. Like, you know what? I'll, I'll just I'll just take the handle if, if it's available and I'll just kind of like share it. And then, yeah. and then of course, once I had it, I, I had all these other ideas of like, oh, this would be funny. And like, oh, this would be so true. And uh, I eventually decided like, well, first of all, sourced some cardboard. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah. and then just started taking photos and grabbing a buddy to like take a quick pic in like a gym or whatever I was doing. So yeah, I just kind of was like a random funny idea and I just kind of like went with it. And then, yeah, I just, it just picked up a little traction and, um, now yeah, quite a few people are following the page. So <laughs> in terms of your like competitive career, so you've been to the games twice on the team, the affiliate cups coming back, you know all these different changes. Are you focused consistently on the business side of everything that you're doing in the CrossFit space? Or are you planning to make any type of return to competing? What does that look like for you? Yeah, I'm hoping to compete again. At the moment with where I'm currently at, this year is not going to be a super competitive year for me. But with the return of the Affiliate Cup, they kind of just change things because we have a pretty competitive affiliate. So if we're putting together teams Mm -hmm. where you cannot have people training in different parts of the world or different parts of the country, you know, combined to make a super team, then that's advantageous for our affiliate because we have a bunch of really talented athletes at the gym. So we're training together pretty regularly. So being able to put a team together from that crew could mean that we're really competitive. So that's been something that a few of us are having a conversation around at the moment. Other than that, I think for me, next year will probably be when I'm feeling like I can really compete again. I think um, this past year has definitely thrown me out a little bit. We were in lockdown for like seven months, so we yeah. didn't have gyms open, which was fine. Like I, I feel like I'm good again, and I feel like I'm getting back into the swing of things now that we're all back open. But um, yeah, I think just with the open, with the timing, I'm just not quite there yet, but next year it will be a good year for me. What about some of the other changes for this year? So I think it's going to be three weeks, right? The yeah. initial component of the year. What do you, how do you feel about that? I think Dave came out a couple of days ago and said, People were expecting an event a week or a workout a week, and it could be more than that, right? So there's still so many unknowns. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's classic Castro, really. Like, there's just so much that we won't know until until we all go through it, which I love. Like, I think, I think that's part of it, and he knows that. He knows that the whole goal of CrossFit is to be ready for the unknown and to have some kind of surprise element. Like I, every year that the open comes around, I'm like, there's not going to be any more surprises. Like there's nothing left. And somehow he'll, he'll do something new or do something different. So I expect nothing, you know, less. I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be different. It will be unlike any other open, especially with the challenges that we're facing in the moment. So 
I'm, I'm personally just excited to see what he brings out. Like I'm excited and I'm also worried because I know that if it's, if it's, you know, just like gut check style workouts where it's very lightweight, it's basic, you know, body weight movements. Um, I, I think it will be a test of people's engines and it won't be until the next stage where you will really test things like some of the more complex gymnastics or weightlifting stuff which is, you know, my preferred stuff. So yeah. <laughs> I think the first stage is going to be um, exciting but hard for sure. What are some of the things people are going to have to do or should have been doing these past couple of months to get ready for the Open if they want to do well? Let's start with like stage one. Like so like what do you think people are going to have to do well to be able to get to the next stage in the top, you know, 90%? The ultimate thing that any athlete can do, regardless of your level and regardless of the stage, is get intensity. That will always be the test in the open and it will always be the test in CrossFit. So, I mean, and when I say intensity, I mean like being able to hurt. So, I think an easy way to hurt is doing lightweight movements because there's no reason to stop. <laughs> it's really like, you know, you can, you can do 150 burpees for time. It's so simple and elegant, but yet it's like... It could be a very slow workout if you're not willing to hurt. It can be a very fast workout if you're willing to hurt. So I think finding intensity in whatever training you're doing is always going to be the secret, the, the like, I don't want to say the magic pill, but it kind of is. It's like, how much can you lean into the discomfort? How much can you lean into a high heart rate? How much can you lean into the, the pain of doing the kind of training that we're doing? And I think that, yeah, the, the lighter body weight stuff is kind of the easiest way to get that sometimes um heavy barbells complex gymnastics or high volume gymnastics can be more about endurance or technique so um i think if everyone's been practicing a lot of double unders and burpees and light barbell snatches and dumbbell thrusters like you're going to be fine um but if you haven't been doing it with intensity then you're in trouble <laughs> Okay, so I'd like to shift a little bit over to body image. So you've been like a pioneer in talking about, especially on your Instagram and through your personal brand, some things that people are just sort of, uh, you know, maybe sensitive topics for some people. They're a little bit uh, afraid to talk about, you know, some of this is, is body image and accepting yourself, loving yourself, loving yourself, you know, and I think that this is pretty cool. And for myself, like, Look, my wife will say, oh, I'm, I don't I don't look the way they want to look. And I'm like, oh, my God, like you look amazing. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. So yeah. and then men do this, too, guys. So like I do the same stuff. It's not just women. So I'm in the mirror and I'm like, what the hell? Like I look terrible today. And she's like, what are you talking about? You know, so like it's good to understand like first about self-love and about body mm -hmm. image. So mm -hmm. I want to know, like from you because you have a lot more experience probably understanding and researching this, is how do we learn to dislike our bodies in general? Um, well, I think what really happens is we're, we're insecure, right? Like at the heart of it, any kind of difficulty that we have with our body is about an insecurity and we're not okay with being vulnerable about that because vulnerability is seen as something that's weak. So I think, where it's really coming from is this fear that we're not going to be accepted or we're not going to be loved and ultimately trying to fix that and trying to repair that and make sure that no one sees that um, because we don't want to be seen as, you know, as having some kind of weakness or having some kind of fault. We want people to perceive us and we want to be able to, or people to perceive us well and we want to be able to leave good impressions on people and for people to like us. So that's like, you know, so many things can kind of really boil down to that. It's like, we just don't want to be secure. We just want to ensure that we're accepted and loved. So I think the body image thing is a, like one of the most obvious examples of that because it is something that's in the forefront of our minds because it's what we're looking at. We're looking at ourselves in the mirror. We're looking at other people. We're seeing other people look at us. And so that's a really easy thing to tap into to really prioritize in our lives. Thank you for listening to the podcast today. We hope you enjoyed it. Keep tuning in every week for more incredible guests and ways to reach your max potential, both physically and mentally. Please subscribe on iTunes or your preferred podcast app and let us know if you like this episode. Don't forget to check us out at consistencybreedsgrowth.com or on Instagram at cbg underscore online underscore sports. Also, feel free to join our free Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash groups slash CBG Nutrition Tribe.